This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. James Cook and the Buffalo Bills defense lead them to victory over the Miami Dolphins, 31-10, this week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your host, Justin Gofford. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. My name is Justin, and I am your host today, and hey, Bills are 2-0. and um, This was a fun game for me, and it, it's ironic that this is not a very exciting box score game. I don't know about any of you, but sometimes, you know, life happens, you're not sitting in front of a TV watching the game live, and that's exactly what happened to me this weekend. I was doing some traveling to see family, had to kind of keep an eye on the game through the box score, and before doing this episode, I watched the the game on NFL Plus a couple times, but, you know, what do you look for when you're, you're box score hunting? You're looking for the exciting offense, uh, the exciting offense, what's Josh Allen doing? What are the receivers doing? And... This game was kind of just like, you know, I'll be checking the score real quick and, oh, the Bills got more points and still not much going on on offense. This game for me was just kind of a testament to what Sean McDermott and Bobby Babich are able to do as defensive minds. James Cook absolutely took over this game, the offensive line creating holes for him. And... I think it's I think this is the type of win that I get the most excited for because the NFL is difficult, right? Everybody's got great players, everybody's got coaches that know what you want to do, they want to take that away and you have to find different ways to be able to win and it's why I'll never apologize for an ugly win, just get the W and you know, some weeks it's going to be your defense holds you up. Some weeks your offense is going to drag you along. And sometimes you're going to need Josh Allen to play hero ball. And, and if if I gave you this, just the score, without any context of the game, and I told you the Bills beat the Dolphins 31-10, to 10, you, you'd probably think Josh Allen went pretty ham in the game. He is... 13 for 19, 139 yards and a touchdown. Just like a very pedestrian game. This team was bolstered up by the defense. Three turnovers, one of them being a pick six. And lots of performances from, you know, unexpected guys. Guys that I would have had concerns about being on the field a couple weeks ago. And they're just kind of getting it done. Jamarcus Ingram, two interceptions, one of them being a pick six. Christian Benford getting an interception. Cam Lewis making a handful of plays. Damar Hamlin made some plays. It's just kind of like all of these positions that we were worried about. And, oh, not to mention, you know, we have Terrell Bernard gets hurt. Matt Milano's already out. We got Bale Inspector out there. Just all of these positions where I, I I would have had concerns and, you know, expected these to maybe be like fatal flaws, especially early in the season. And McDermott and Babich are just getting it done on defense. So they deserve the props that they get right now. The the one note that I, you know, kind of starred, highlighted, all that was towards the tail end of the game and it was it was nothing really serious but i was really excited for it because we're talking you know week 2 of the season this high powered Miami offense that gives everybody fits 
division rival, you know, all all kinds of things to build this game up. You're in a prime time slot, and there was a play in the fourth quarter where I believe it was Austin Johnson, maybe it was Dwayne Carter, not sure, um, but they're getting after the quarterback, get a quarterback hurry, quarterback hit, and down the field the ball goes into triple coverage could have easily been you know intercepted on most sets of plays but we had Mike Edwards in there Cole Bishop and Balen Spector breaking up this pass and you know I know we're kind of garbage time fourth quarter two is hurt at this point and you know it is what it is I, I feel like I'm talking about a preseason game but that's what gets me excited for it right like we're in week two of the season and we're sitting there in the fourth quarter quarter with a comfortable enough lead that we're we're getting our backups and our young guys reps and I know this isn't going to happen every week those are just valuable reps that most teams aren't going to be able to get their players like you're either the starter or you're not and if you're not make sure you stay ready in case of injury but Bills are out here. Mike Edwards, Cole Bishop, Bale Inspector, all coming together to break up a pass at the end of the game. And I, I thought that was a pretty fun layer to this. Offensively, as I mentioned, we don't have a ton, ton to talk about here. The one thing we do have to talk about is James Cook. And if you listen to the show on a regular basis... You know that I had my hot take of the offseason was somewhere six, seven weeks into the season. We were going to see Ray Davis, you know, take over primary primary ball carrier duties from James Cook. And uh, maybe James Cook heard me and, and he took it personally, but he came out and had a freaking day. Three touchdowns, two on the ground, one in the air. The one, the one receiving touchdown he had was an absolutely beautiful play. It comes through the benefit of McDermott being aggressive on offense, which if you've listened to the show last week, you know that I always appreciate McDermott's aggressiveness as a coach, but it's often aggressive using special teams and defense. Seeing them go for it on fourth down, to seal off this drive, beautiful play call. James Cook running open. He catches the ball. Just absolutely beautiful. He ends up with 11 carries, 78 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Uh, the one carry, absolute thing of beauty. 49-yard run. He gets to the second level, and it's it's him versus Poyer left. And this is one that I've seen all over the socials of, like, you know, you hear it all the time, like you'd rather get out a year too early on a guy than a year too late. And it seems like, you know, we noticed that maybe Poyer was losing a step last year. Maybe there was some injury stuff going on. But when Cook is getting that edge and we're doing a foot race between Poyer taking an angle and Cook getting to the end zone, I... There, he was at like the 20 yard line before I realized he was gone and this isn't to sit here and knock Jordan Poyer throw anything at him Jordan Poyer is one of my all time favorite bills but when I when I'm able to put that up against what we're seeing from the bills defense in the absence of all these names you know we lost a lot of key players on this defense and I, I think there was some just anxiety of the unknown through the off season of like we all as fans know these players were around they may be losing a step Trey White we knew was injured the last two years and I think that myself included the kind of like national narrative of like look at all these names that you've lost kind of like I had to keep reminding myself of the perspective of it that it's not five years ago. These guys were another five years older. They were dealing with injuries throughout. 
and I kind of got to the point where like I I was cool with having to move on but I was I was very unsure of what the next players up were and honestly when it comes to at least the defensive like back seven you have to be feeling good about you know McDermott and Babbage developing these players and I already felt that way but you know Maybe you lucked into Poyer and Hyde and it happened to work out that way. Maybe a couple of these guys slipped through the cracks, but we're now talking a laundry list of players who were afterthoughts from other teams, you know, late round picks. You even can take Reswell Douglas, who was somebody the Packers were willing to let go last year. And, you know, that that one's a little bit of a different scenario. You gave up a third-round pick for him. It wasn't like, you know, you got him for uh, a late-round pick swap. But the the list of players that, between McDermott and Babich, playing safety, playing cornerback, that just don't have this NFL pedigree, they're not household names, and... They're getting it done week in and week out. And this game for in particular for me is really highlights that. Because we're not talking about, you know, some bum quarterback with mediocre receivers or like, you know, a team in transition with some talent but a lot of unknown. I mean, this was a Miami defense that gave all kinds of teams fits last year. This is Tyreek Hill, you know, one of the fastest players in football, paired up with Jalen Waddell and their explosive speed. And we saw them do next to nothing against the Bills. I mean, we have Jalen Waddell, four catches on four targets for 41 yards. Tyreek Hill, six targets, three catches, 24 yards. Both of them kept out of the end zone. And you know that that's that's like your offensive threat right there. Sprinkle in Devon Achan. You know he had twenty two carries for ninety six yards, and it, it's often hard not to get frustrated when you have some plays getting gashed in the run game. Right? It's it's never fun to watch that. But kind of the perspective of I've talked about this a lot into last season about the Bills kind of letting you pick your poison and a team like this, they're like, go ahead and run all day. If you have 100 yards on the ground and you feel like you had a good ground game, probably means you didn't have the same day passing it. And I will take 100 yards on the ground from HN over Tyreek Hill, you know, getting rolling, getting some consistent touches, getting the yak, and all of a sudden he has, you know, 170 yard day on you and two touchdowns and everybody's having a bad time. So I think it it's I think it's even more impressive of how they've been able to keep this defense slapped together. Then you add in the injuries and you add in that we're in week two of the season and a lot of these guys are getting, you know, some of their first significant reps. And it just makes me feel good about the team going forward. Dorian Williams, Balen Spector getting valuable time out there. Now I would still much prefer it to be Milano and Bernard out there. Don't don't get me wrong there. But there is a chance that, well, we will get Bernard back this season. Hopefully. Hopefully nothing, you know, crazy shows up later like we're seeing with Christian McCaffrey. Uh, Man Milano hopefully coming back this season at some point. And your hope there is that we've gotten like the serious injury bug out of the way early. I do still have concerns about the linebackers at this point. We have, you know, largely unproven talent out there. These are guys that, and Dorian Williams inspector that we've invested in through the draft and seemingly, you know, have made at least some noise through preseason and training camps. But we haven't seen them start a ton, and and what does that look like? So I still have 
some concern there, but my biggest concern in regards to like the linebackers in particular is that we we're already we've already tested the depth. Like we're already there. We're like where we were upset about being in the playoffs last year and you know, we bolstered our linebackers to make sure we don't end up in that same spot and it just happened earlier this season. So hopefully we can just be done there. Maybe we'll see Buffalo Joe get a jersey next week. Who knows? There's a lot going on there. But overall just a great a great day on both sides of the ball. It, it just kind of like what complimentary football can look like and it's it's not always just, you know, the defense making plays and the offense taking care of the ball. Like this this was a game where the offense really didn't have to do a whole lot and the defense was was going to will them there. I will say, you know, I, I've I've seen some stuff pop up, you know, you know how Twitter goes of, you know, oh congratulations, you beat the Dolphins back of quarterback. Uh I debated even getting into this. I mean, Tua got hurt in the fourth quarter that the game was it was already all but over. Um I just kind of want to stay away from the Tua injury. Um it it always looks very scary. Knowing his history, all that. But I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know, you know, what in particular with Tua makes his concussion hits look so much scarier than most of them we see. I do know that we had, you know, a guy in Mitch Morse that had a pretty crazy concussion history and he kept coming back and I'm not going to sit here and prognosticate and predict what Tua is or should do or what his team and family should be telling him to do. I I don't feel like any of that's my place. I, it's really easy for me to say like, hey, you just got a bunch of guaranteed money in your contract. Seems like a good time to step away. I also have never had, you know, the competitive streak in me that these players have to have to be able to make it to that level. Like it's, it's, it's not easy for them to be like, okay, I've made money. I'm just going to hang it up. So that's, that's kind of my real non-committal two cents on it. All I really hope is that he's okay now. And, you know, whatever decision he makes going forward is, is the right decision for him. I, I love seeing the bills beat the dolphins some things are bigger than football. You know, I just, just hope for him and his family that he's all right. Takes time to look at everything and, and makes the best decision for him. That's all I really got on that. One thing kind of lost in this, and I'm, again, not going to get too high or low on this, is we did have a Tyler Bass miss in this game. He did hit one from 43, four for four on his extra points. Like, that's encouraging. Yes, he's an NFL kicker. He's a highly paid NFL kicker. We have our concerns with him due to the end of last year and the start of, you know, preseason training camp, whatnot. I am going to try very hard not to get too low on him when we see a miss because... NFL kickers are like any other player on the field. They make mistakes. They're going to miss. They're going to shank things. I I will say that I wish when he missed, they just looked better. And that may or may not sound stupid. I don't know. But like that ball came off his foot and you didn't have to watch the trajectory of it at all. You didn't have to watch where it went. You You knew that ball wasn't going through the uprights. I just can't really wrap my head around like how he looks so good and then so bad. Um, like I said, it's, it's it's one kick from this game. I don't have an alternative plan that makes sense of who's out there that's better, that's going to make all the money things make sense. So 
my support goes behind Bass, and I'm I'm gonna kind of try to take a more positive approach to this and hope if we have enough people in his corner, everything you know works itself out, and he gets all the way back on track. That's about it from this game. Like I said, there it, there's like a ton to talk about that was great, but also like this is just one of the more fun relaxing stress-free games i i've gotten to watch as a bills fan and in, in recent history they always like to make it stressful and you know be a tight one score game uh this game you know I, I granted i had the benefit of having the final score as i sat down to watch it but it was also like watching this game like live for me the first time you know because I wasn't following it like play by play as I was watching it I I know like how the whole game script broke down and all that watching it live for me was like there was no there wasn't much time that I really felt stressed you know the Dolphins get the field goal before half and I'm like okay it's it's a two score game like that can get erased pretty quickly let's Make sure we keep things buttoned up. You never know what the halftime adjustments are going to look like. But, like, there was at no point that I felt like this game was in any sort of jeopardy. Now, coming up, we do have the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they currently sit at 0-2. And don't look like the threat that I thought they might be as they loaded up on weapons. But it's also only two weeks. I don't want to put too much context into anything. You know, we see week one, like, that, for all intents and purposes, should have been a win against Miami. They, you know, have the lead. They're going down, threatening to score. ETN has a fumble. Miami turns it into a touchdown. End up winning on a last-second field goal. It is what it is. That's That's... That's football. You can't, you know, it's easy to say if we take away that one play, but the one play happened. Um, I will say that Jacksonville is a team that, for whatever reason, has been able to have a great ability to, to give the Bills some problems in recent years. Ha- being a team that's loaded up this off season and, you know, has some expectations and has had some success and built upon the roster that they had success with. I don't love that. We have them coming into town prime time, probably pretty pissed off. that They started the season. Oh, and two, like I said, despite all of the changes within the, the Bills locker room this off season, they look like they haven't really missed a beat. Hopefully this, you know, little mini buy they have here, get some time to get a good game plan together, get the team rested up a little bit, maybe get some of these guys with bumps and bruises a little bit healed up. Taron Johnson front, and you know, we still haven't seen him move to IR, so maybe there's a chance. I don't know. I know they're not going to rush him back. But in the meantime, I I feel pretty good about what we got going on uh, with the depth on this team, which, you know, as the depth kind of became the starters in, in a lot of spots, I feel pretty good about what we've looked like so far with the depth already, you know, having to show itself. So a lot more football to play. As of the recording of this podcast, the Bills do sit in the one seed. Maybe we can take that, you know, a little bit wire to wire and have one of the most exciting seasons of football that we've seen, and we've seen a lot of good football recently. That's it for this week's episode. I do thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. If you made it this far... If you're on YouTube, hit the like button, drop a comment for us. It really helps. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure you're checking us out. 
on our website, wanderingbuff.com. Jake's been doing a ton of work on articles. I'm going to do a little bit more myself. We got merch up there for sale. If you're listening on you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, drop a review. All these little things really help us to keep the show coming out every week, and it is greatly appreciated. The Bills are sitting 2-0. and We got another primetime game coming up. So uh, let's enjoy this little mini bye, and we will see you next week. As always, Bull Bills. <laughs>